Hi, and welcome to Pettynomics, where we discuss the pettiness of our current economic environment and propose solutions to it all. In this episode, I'd like to share with you a technique I've been using to manage my money since I started working as a teenager. In the past, I used to do it paper and pencil style. Then, as I learned Microsoft Excel, it became much easier for me to do it in an Excel workbook. I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Don't worry if you're not quite familiar with Excel. If you just grasp the principle, this is something you can do using a pen and paper. The goal is to have it all in one place where you can keep track and keep track of it long-term. So the very first thing that we're going to do is set up the dates of our paychecks as they're getting ready to roll in. So this Friday is January 24th. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put 1, 24, 20 right here in the upper left hand corner. I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger so you can see. Now, because I like my things kind of flushed to the left, I'm just gonna flush the column to the left. You do not have to do that. It just makes it easier for me. I'm gonna skip about four columns in between and there's a reason for that. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Right here, I'm gonna do two weeks from now because we are basing this model off of a bi-weekly paycheck system. The paycheck that comes up after that is the 2720 paycheck. Again, I like my columns kind of flush to the left. Skip four again, one, two, three, four. And here we're gonna put the next one, which is going to be February 21st. And then we're gonna do it one more time, one, two, three, four, and put the next paycheck, which would be March 6th. Now, you don't have to do this part, but I like to just put the word paycheck so I know exactly what it is and exactly what book I'm working in. And then I just kind of paste that all the way down. Perfect. And let's get these flush left and flush left. So half of the battle has already been won. Now, I do like to kind of put some boundary markers in between these just to make it a little bit easier to see visually. So I'll come here and I will actually put a border around this. Some people prefer the thick borders. Why don't we do the thick borders just to make it a little easier to see? That's better. Still leaving just a little bit of space in between each one because you really don't want them to run up on each other. You want to make it visually very easy to see. And then let's draw one around this one. Perfect. If you're doing this with pen and paper, you might just do one of these on a separate sheet of paper. So each one has its own page. Now that we have this set up, let's start to set up the paycheck itself and the numbers. So to make the math very, very easy, I'm going to make the paycheck amount $1,000. I'm going to format this as currency because I want it to be currency and, and look like currency to me as I'm looking at it. So I'm gonna right click, format cells. I'm gonna to go to currency. I actually don't like the two decimal places. I think it makes the page a little messy, but you can use the decimal places, especially if you are paying dollar amounts that have cents in them. So I'm gonna leave it nice and clean as 1000. Then I'm actually just gonna format the whole column so the whole thing will do that without me having to do it over and over and over again. And uh-oh, I took out my bottom border. Okay. So now since we are going to base the entire thing off of $1,000, we can just go ahead and copy and paste this in the same spot all along the edge here. So now we have the next four paychecks coming up from January 24th all the way to March 6th for $1,000 each. Let's start filling in our actual bills. So typically around the end of the month, rent or your mortgage is due. So the first bill, which we're gonna put on the second line here is rent slash mortgage. I like to make it wider. So you just double click the line so it all fits. So that's our rent and mortgage payment. Perhaps your cell phone is due around this time. Maybe you have a credit card or more than one. So we'll say credit card one. And then maybe your car insurance comes due around this time. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and fill in the remaining bills, okay? And you can actually come here. I like to put the due date up here and let's go ahead and just make that uniform across the board. So now what we have is the date of the paycheck, the due date that's coming up, the paycheck amount. And if you wanted to put this, you could put pay to or due to or, you know, whomever. Whomever you owe the money to, you could put up here, but I just leave it empty because to me it's pretty obvious. 
So now we have our rent, cell phone, credit card, car insurance. You come over here to this paycheck that follows the first one and you put the rest of your bill. So maybe on this one, you're gonna put your actual car payment. You're gonna put maybe your second credit card. You're gonna put your utilities. And for the sake of simplicity, let's just say that that's all that comes due around that time. And the way we know that is based on the due date. February is coming up. So we're gonna assume your rent or mortgage is due on the first. Let's make this a little neater and center that. Let's say your cell phone is due on the 10th. Let's say your first credit card is due on the 12th and your car insurance is due on the 15th. Okay, now let's say your actual car payment is due on the 20th. Let's say your second credit card is due on the 22nd and your utilities are due on the 25th of each month. Okay, now for the most important part, let's see how much money we actually have at the end of each paycheck each month. Of this $1,000, what we're going to do is set up a formula that will tell us automatically how much money we have left. I'd like to put that right down here towards the bottom. You come up here to the upper right hand corner, you hit the sigma, which stands for sum, and it's automatically going to add up these columns here. So it's asking you add up A3 through A17. Yes, that's exactly what we want. So we're gonna hit enter, and because nothing is there other than the 1,000, it should reflect $1,000 down here. That's a good sign that you did it correctly. Make sure when you do it, you encompass the paycheck amount, because if you don't, it will only calculate the bills without factoring in the paycheck. That is not a good thing. So now, let's say your rent is $700 a month. Let's say your cell phone is $65 a month. Your first credit card, we'll say, is $50 a month and your car insurance is $125 a month. So at the end of the 124.20 paycheck, you have approximately $60 left over, okay? Now, let's do the next one and look at what that all means. Let's set up our equation first. In theory, you could do a format paint from this column to this one. It gets a little complicated and I don't wanna confuse you, so we'll just walk through the steps again. We'll click here. Come up to your upper right hand corner where it says auto sum, click it, and it's gonna ask you add up E3 through E17, yes. And we have $1,000 here because we haven't put anything in the columns right here. So let's say our car payment is $425 a month. Let's say our credit card number two, let's go ahead and add that two in there, and you can use the actual bank name if you want to, is $75 a month. And let's say your utilities are $200 a month. So what this truly leaves you is $300 after your 27 paycheck and $60 after your 124 paycheck for a grand total of $360 left over after paying bills each month. Now, a lot of people like to take the approach of creating a budget. This is fine, but you can only really budget what's left over. So if you know that each rent check is going to leave you with $60 left over, you know you have to hold on and budget this $300 a little bit better in order to survive the gap in between these two paychecks that recurs every two weeks. Now, before you go any further, you might wanna go ahead and set up the rest of your paychecks. So we know that this occurs every two weeks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy these and paste them over here. Since this is going into the future, you wanna update your due date. So this would be for 3-1. Cell phone falls on 3-10. Credit card one falls on 3-12. And the car insurance falls on 3-15. I like my formatting to be the same, so I'm just gonna do a little format painting here to update those. Let's go ahead and update this one since we've already got it set up. And now I'm going to go ahead and copy these because we know they come after the rent paycheck. Paste them here, spread your spreadsheet out. The car payment falls on the 20th of each month. I'm gonna back up. Credit card two falls on the 22nd and utilities fall on the 25th. And there we have it. And let's go ahead and just do our math. Let's set up our equations for these two here. So now you have a visual representation of the next four paychecks for the next four months. 
Ideally, what you would want to do is draw this out for the remainder of the year. So you would go ahead and set up your 320 paycheck, your 43 paycheck, so forth and so on. So you have a visual roadmap of how much money you actually have at the end of each paycheck and really in total for the month. Then if you want to create a budget from there based on the $360 that you actually have at the end of each month, you can do that. But you shouldn't go into it basing your budget off of the $1,000 paycheck because really that's an illusion. It's an illusion for two reasons. One, most of that money is devoted to standing in existing bills. And two, because of the way the bills are staggered, one paycheck you end up with $60 left over, while the other paycheck you end up with $300 left over. It's all about paying attention to that staggering and negotiating for the gap in between the $60 paycheck and the $300 paycheck. Additionally, based on the due dates, you might choose to move the cell phone, credit card one, and car insurance bill over to the 2-7 paycheck. Let's do that and just see what happens to the numbers when we do that. So I'm gonna grab these, I'm gonna copy them, I'm gonna paste them here, and I'm gonna delete them from over here. As you can see, all that has happened is the numbers have flip-flopped. So basically, one check or the other, you're gonna end up with about $60 left over. And the other check, you will end up with $300 left over. So it's really up to you but the thing you need to walk away understanding is that you have $360 to work with each month that are not standing recurring bills. I hope this approach has given you some insight into paychecks, due dates, and how the way they stagger and fall into your account affect how much money you have each month. I'm very curious to hear how you manage your paychecks monthly. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below.